first initial reaction was I was elated. I was super excited that I was chosen. I mean, I was excited just to be nominated by the faculty at my university. Um, but it was really, I think, just the timing that was so nice about it because it was about an hour and a half before I had to get ready for my graduation thesis e exhibition. So it was really nice to be able to share that moment with all the people that had come in town to see my um, other exhibition, which is um, a lot of those pieces are here now. So um, I was really excited. And to, to see this place and to be a part of this place was, um, is an honor. And, and it's beautiful and a very new experience. So thank you. Hi, my name is Libby Ponce. Um, I'm from the University of South Florida. Uh, the first thing that I thought of when um, I was accepted into the exhibition, I was one, really excited, two, I wanted to like know who the other students were, so I immediately like stalked them on social media, and then three, um, I was excited to come have like a reason to see Atlantic Center, because I had always heard that it was like really pretty and beautiful, and so, and I'd never been here before, so yeah. Um, I was extremely surprised and very much honored knowing that I was one of like four students in the entire state of Florida to be selected for such a prestigious exhibition in such a nice place and everyone here has been very uh, helpful and uh, heartwarming and very much care about the arts so I really appreciated being a part of this project. process involves using charcoal as a medium. I think it's a great symbolism for uh, black people, black skin because of the rich undertones and minerals that it has and how many different shades it can be used. Um, each process for my work is semi-different depending on how the subject matter is. Sometimes it's much more methodical and it's planned out and other times it's very loose and um, responsive to what the emotions I'm going through. Like for this piece example, the George Stinney Jr. piece that I did, um, this one is very much a reaction-based piece that was very pent on emotion. So I heard of the story of George Stinney Jr. He's the youngest boy to be executed in America. He was 14 years old and he was wrongfully convicted, trialed and killed for false accusations and everything. So um, this piece right here was uh, me writing the number 260 repetitively over and over again. Uh, that's his prison identification number. So I just kind of went in just throwing the number around, flipping it upside down. And I did the same thing here too with this piece, but with the number 70. So the number 70 represents the, year, the years after his death for him to be exonerated, which means he was cleared for all crimes because he didn't do anything. So I, I wrote the numbers down very furiously and vigorously. And then as I did that, I kind of pulled away at the darkness to show off the stripes of his uniform uh, or his attire at the time, because uh, all the pictures you can only find of him are of him in his uh, prison garments. Um, and I kind of, purposely excluded uh, any eyes or any like major facial features to kind of emphasize that this is not the only story which uh, a black boy or a black man has been persecuted for a crime he didn't commit. And the piece in the middle, this is an example of something being a little bit more methodical and thought out because when I heard the story about how he died, it was very depressing because they put him in, they used to call these chairs old sparkies but it's electrocution chair and they put him in this chair and he was so small that they had to put books for him to sit on to prop him up so he can reach the helmet area. So I kind of drew that electric chair in the same mindset of this daunting, overwhelming presence that this must have had from him, from his perspective. Um, he was also a Christian, so he uh, had the Bible with him, but again, because he was short, they took the Bible and they used it as a booster seat. Um, you can see like a little bit of an illusion right here from that uh, perspective. And this is just kind of my interpretation of the issues that we still face in America today. Um, and this is my emotional, immediate emotional response along with methodical thought out overarching 
reaction to the entire situation. So um, I'm Ecuadorian and uh, I've always sort of had this relation with my extended family in Ecuador and I visit them not as often as I would like to but enough and right before um, this semester I planned I kind of planned it to do like a research trip over winter break in Ecuador where I took a 360 video um, because I knew that I wanted to have a VR component to my work and then I did a bunch of other research in the Museum of Archaeology and Contemporary Art or Museo de Archaeología y Arte Contemporáneo um, and so I did that I was looking at um, just like the archives and like they have like the largest uh, collection of ancient Andean or like Ecuadorian artifacts over there so I was like really honored that they got, uh, let me look at all of it. Um, and so this form right here is from a mother of pearl like necklace pendant um, that I just, just like really admired and I had to have kind of like recently in the past um, was like making some dog sculptures. So it was a good segue for that. And first I, I knew I definitely wanted these, um, the VR component, but then I was like, well, how do I present the VR? Like, I don't just want it like on a hook or like on a table. So I was like, well, I do sculptures, so I should make a sculpture for the VR. And that, that's when this came. And uh, I'd been making some other uh, structures with foam, and I kind of like the process of it a bit, so that's why I left some uh, parts uncovered. This is a kind of like a uh, grout finish with terracotta coloring, and then like some other like resin and like iridescent mediums. Um, I'd also been working with some other like actual ceramic tile stuff, like four by four ceramic tile, but I wanted to find a way to make um, the tile structures lighter and uh, just like portable and larger. And so I decided to try out this like peel and stick tile on these cardboard boxes. Um, for some reason, I just have been really liking the grid a lot, either as like, uh, I was like doing some 3D like digital modeling and so I liked like how there was like these planes and how each surface kind of had like this grid like warped around it. So I was thinking about that, thinking about pixels and like in addition to like creating planes, like how each of those is like a different sort of plane of like existence maybe. Um, and I think there was something else, but I live in like an old house and there are these like four by four tiles or just like square tiles and I think they're beautiful. So there's that, uh, what else? The 360 video in the VR, it's all shot in Ecuador. It's, uh, I edited it too, and it's got like subtitles that are like these GIFs. Um, oh, and it talks about años viejos, uh, and we kind of like are taken through by like my cousin Fernanda and some parts me um, through the town like on New Year's Day where they like make these cardboard paper mache like structures of like either cartoons or political figures or someone who made them mad that year or something and then they like make it it's all like paper mache it's really cool looking and then they stick a bunch of fireworks in it and pour gasoline all over and then light it on fire like at midnight uh, and it's just it was spectacular so I thought that's what I like really wanted to record while I was there um, so it's kind of like a compilation of that and then it was brought to my attention that like this structure is a little bit like that except it's made with like flame retardant foam so it doesn't really burn which I just thought was a funny full circle. Yeah. So my current process, um, it has evolved um, over time from something that was a little bit more articulated, like you would consider a normal uh, ceramic sculpture, like hand-built objects. Um, I mean, these are hand-built, but in a different form, um, to something a bit more um, ambiguous or um, abstracted in a way. Um, and so the way that I make my process right now is to take these objects, these, these um, larger pieces, and I build frames for them, and then I, I layer strat or stratify um, various types of ceramic or clay material within those, um, those forms, those templates. And then I fire them and I remove certain pieces. Some pieces are left in and re-epoxied back into the, the piece after the firing. Um, but then some things are 
totally coated in ceramic or porcelain. For example, like these, um, the sandwich or the paper towels are actually totally ceramic. So both of those are made out of a, a high fire porcelain. And, but at one point that was actual Wonder Bread. So it's dipped into the porcelain, it absorbs the, the slurry, and then the bread fires out, but the, the material, the ceramic material remains behind. The same thing with the paper towels. So even though it looks like paper towels, they're really, it, the slip was painted onto the surface um, and then re-rolled up. And as that happened, um, the paper burned out and then the um, porcelain remains. The keys are slip cast. Um, and then this is an actual like mug, a dollar store mug that was there. So after this, what I wanna do is um, go to grad school um, and continue the research that I'm already working on and see where that leads to. Um, and since a lot of my work is dependent on the spaces that I'm in and the communities that I'm in, I'm interested in finding a new place to go to school um, and use that community to influence my work um, using similar threads along that. And then in the end, I would like to teach, to continue teaching um, at a research one institution along with my practice. So being able to juggle those two things. Um, so I just did my thesis work, like my BFA thesis, which is this. Um, and I'm gonna go to Yale Norfolk um, in Connecticut uh, for like six weeks. And then right now, and then right after that, I go to Acre Residency, and then I come back, and in the fall and spring, I'm gonna do a BA in philosophy. I already have a minor, so it's only like seven more classes until the major. Hopefully, that's how it all goes. And then, I also in all the process of that, apply for like a creative research Fulbright in Ecuador, and then hopefully I get to do it, and then I do it, and then after that, do grad school, and then I'll figure it out. I graduate December of this year in 2019, and my plan is to take like a year or two break just to keep developing my practice and coming up with new ideas and maybe traveling just to see how that will influence my work. And then I plan on uh, attending grad school to get my master's so I can eventually become a professor at a university and also an artist at the same time.